Are point and click games dead? No, thank goodness not quite yet, but they are a dying breed in recent years. Point and click games are very nostalgic for me and anytime somebody makes a good classically inspired one these days, I get very, very happy. I was going to feature three games in this video today, but the first one ended up being so good, I decided it deserved a video all to itself. This is Rose Cottage, a stunningly well-made, humorous point-and-click puzzle game made by one person. I still can't believe that. It's a skull on a doily. That about sums this place up. If you are a point-and-click or a puzzle game fan like me, you are not going to want to miss this one. Trust me. But before we dive into the game, allow me to officially welcome you guys to the first video of a brand new series on the channel that I am calling Games That Need Eyeballs. This series will feature small-time games that are not getting the attention they deserve primarily ones that are heavily inspired by our favorite, beloved old games. We're keeping it retro around here, guys. I will be covering multiple genres, basically whenever I find a retro-inspired game that is also criminally underviewed or underrated and needs more eyeballs. It's going on this series. If that sounds like your jam, subscribe to stay updated on all the new videos that I'm releasing on this series. If these great games are so hard to find, then how am I finding them? Magic! No, no, actually, I get a lot of hot tips from my friends in the indie dev community, and you guys send me a lot of great game requests. So if you know of any that fit the bill for this series, please comment below because I'm making a list. Okay, now back to our feature presentation. In Rose Cottage, you play as Detective Inspector Edward Barrington, who has family ties to the ownership of a spooky old Victorian mortuary. That looks nice lit up. Atmosphere? Yes. At the start of the game, the detective receives a call and finds out that the entire staff at the mortuary has gone missing and that something really strange might be happening. So like any professional investigator would do, he accepts the case as a classic missing persons case and heads over to Hollow Lane Mortuary, which is a huge, awesome Victorian mansion. Good evening, miss. Soon after he arrives, lots of strange and supernatural things start happening as we start investigating around the place. The first thing I noticed was that this game is just oozing atmosphere and style right off the bat. I love the mix of humor and authentic spookiness. To give you a quick idea of the humor, there is an option you can toggle on and off in the menu for dad jokes. <laughs> uh, I will leave that on, obviously. The game is not all jokes though. It strikes a great balance, as I mentioned. The story itself is actually dark and mysterious and quite serious at times. It's just that the protagonist, who is completely in denial of anything and everything supernatural, even when obvious ghostly things are occurring before his very eyes, I, uh, I, I suspect a gust of wind blew the door shut and then locked it. I found at least the demo version of the game to be very well written and nicely balanced between lighthearted humor and the serious tones of a proper ghost story. I'm not a good writer or game designer or anything, but I feel like that's probably pretty hard to do, right? By the way, if you like the sound of this so far, but you don't want any more spoilers, go and play the demo for yourself now. It's free to play on Steam. While you're there, don't forget to wishlist the game because wishlisting the game really helps the developer a lot, even if you don't plan to buy it. Let's show Steam that we want more great point and click games like this one. So let's talk about the gameplay. As a point and click, you would assume that the game would include some form of pointing and clicking on things. <laughs> I'm happy to report there are loads of things to click on and fully voiced dialogue lines for everything, even things that you aren't going to actually pick up, which is always nice. It just adds atmosphere and more lore is always good. 
The game does have the classic style of picking things up, putting them in your endless pockets and carrying them around until you need to use them to solve some sort of environmental puzzle. The coolest thing that I noticed about this game though, is that there are multiple solutions to the puzzles. So if you think you have an item that might make sense to solve a problem, well, you're probably correct because the developer tried really hard to make the puzzles have multiple solutions. So that means the player gets more time feeling smart and less time feeling that classic frustrating feeling when the thing doesn't go in the thing and you just think it should go in the thing, but the game doesn't let you put it in the thing, but it should go there. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> For example, to move a wooden cart in the hallway that wouldn't move because the wheels are rusted, you can either use a big brush to scrape away the rust or you can use some oil from your lantern. Neato. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of this in the full release. There are other types of puzzles as well. I found a color memory puzzle, which I didn't have to literally memorize because the game was nice enough to jot it down in the journal when I found the answer. The journal, by the way, is really helpful and it gives you a nice recap of everything you find along the way, as well as Detective Barrington's thoughts on the situation and little tiny subtle hints of what you might need to do next. As you explore the mansion, you can use a map, which is very rare in points and click adventures, might I add. It helps to give you detailed layout of the mansion, so you know generally where to go for your next objective. Most rooms are locked to start with and will become unlocked as you progress and find keys and other ways to access various parts of the mansion. This kind of reminds me of the early Resident Evil games in a way. As I was exploring the mansion, I got some strong Black Mirror vibes as well, which is one of my favorite point and click games, so that's a great sign too. Since this is a demo and an early build of the game, I did find a few small glitches, but nothing serious and nothing that blocked progress. Just very tiny things, honestly, m not even really worth mentioning. And the dev was actually in my stream while I was playing and he even said he was grateful and was going to fix them immediately. And to my surprise, the next morning, I noticed that Steam had auto downloaded a patch for the game already. So yeah, this dev is on top of things. <laughs> I am not at all worried about the solidity of this game on release. The developer is very, very skilled and actually in his past is known for creating some of the most impressive Thief 2 fan missions around and completely wowing the community on multiple occasions. I actually played the original Rose Cottage Thief fan mission that this dev created, which by the way, this game is based on. That was seven years ago. I can't believe it was so long ago. It was back when I was playing all the old Thief games here on Lilia TV. If you're also into those, then I highly recommend his work there too. I'll link some of his past work in the description, but I am very, very happy that this person is making full games now because this work is just so impressive for a solo developed game. I can't wait to see what other things they're gonna make next. We're nearing the end of this review now, and you might be thinking, geez, Lilia, don't you have any criticisms to share? This game can't be that good. <laughs> well, in honesty, apart from the teeny tiny glitches in the demo version, I really don't have any complaints at all. I'm not just saying that to be nice. I actually think it's a very good, solid, classically inspired point and click game with some great modern innovations that make the game a very nice gameplay experience for old school school gamers and newbies too. If I had to pick one criticism, I guess the only thing that I could say is that if you are looking for a super old school difficult points and click experience with tough puzzles and pixels that you can't find until you've scoured every area 500 times, you won't find that here. At least in the demo, the game was fairly easy for me. I don't want to make that judgment completely though until I play the full game because a lot of times the start of games are easier than the middle and the end. It's a good way of getting players into the game and teaching them the mechanics without the player feeling frustrated or quitting early. So if that is the case and the game gets a bit tougher later on, then that's even better. The free demo gives us a great idea of what to expect out of the full game at release. Great storytelling, humorous dialogue, the dad joke option as a bonus, and the fact that it's an option is humorous in itself. We get gorgeous hand-painted locations and characters, charming and very high quality voice acting, especially from the detective himself. Um, what the chips? That does it. There's definitely someone else in this house. 
Hello? And a great ghost story with classic point-and-click gameplay upgraded with some modern-day conveniences in order to keep our sanity in check. Guys, if you are a fan of this type of game, or if you just like a good detective-style ghost story, you need to try this game for yourself. If you want to watch my playthrough of the demo, you can find it on my second channel, Lilia Uncut, where I post all of my long-form content and my live stream VODs. And I am streaming most of these games live on my Twitch channel, so if you want to see my first impressions of each game live, or just join in on the fun of discovering these games and finding new ones with me, follow me over there. I stream on Twitch every week. Link is down in the description below. We are starting this new series off strong with this one, and I hope that I can find more games that need eyeballs that are just as promising as this one for you guys very soon. Please let me know in the comments below if you know of any that I need to check out. I'll see you guys soon for the next juicy game that needs more eyeballs. Stay cheesy, friends.